Hello and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delve into, my wife cheated with her boss. Come, let's explore these real life stories. Hi everyone. Before we begin the actual story, I want to say that I'm in a really tough spot and could really use some advice. Please go through my whole story and then share your thoughts on how I should handle these complex emotions and decisions about my marriage. Now, let me take you through the events that have led me to this crossroads in my life. My wife cheated on me with her boss, and I'm thinking about revenge. My wife, my confidant, my best friend, the person that I thought would be there for me no matter what, became my enemy that day. My wife hated me and wasn't afraid to tell me that. Days before, she wouldn't have dared to tell me that she hated me. I was confused and I did not understand what was happening on that day. I felt like a child whose parents were abusing them, and all they wanted was to be loved. To summarize things, my wife called the police on me, left the home that we picked out and purchased together, left our children, and then she went to be intimate with and spend the night with another man. We had been married for 10 years and had two children together. At the time, I did not know that's what was transpiring as I sat broken in the home that we built together. I began putting the pieces together. I knew what was happening. In all honesty, I had known for weeks, but I had refused to admit it to myself. The signs were all there, but I gave her the benefit of the doubt and I refused to see what was happening right in front of my face. The only issue is, at that point, I didn't know with whom it was happening. I thought it was with her male friend from work, but it turned out to be her boss. She did an excellent job of hiding in plain sight and throwing me off her trail. Her lies, mixed with the trust that I had in her, made it hard for me to pinpoint what was going on. All I knew was that my marriage was unraveling in front of me and I was scared. I felt helpless. Little did I know, I really was helpless. Not only did two of the worst things imaginable happen to me, but I almost threw my life away that night as well. I waited outside a replacement employment from midnight until 7 a.m. the next morning for the person that I thought she had spent the night with. I was thinking with pure anger and pain. I was so hurt by the one person that I thought would never hurt me that nothing in life mattered to me at that point. Looking back, I am so thankful for the way the events of the following morning transpired. Had any choices been made differently, I could possibly be writing this from a 10 by 10 cell. The day that turned out to be the worst day of my life had been building for many months. By the time I realized what was happening, it was already too late to stop the train that was already in motion. My wife had already been with this other man sexually multiple times by this point. She had already fallen for him. She did not have a plan of how to move forward, but she was certain that she didn't want me anymore. In my heart and mind, I searched for what I had done to deserve this. Even though it has been months, I can still remember that day like it was yesterday. We got into an argument over nothing. She pushed every button I had until I grew frustrated and angry. She called the police, they arrived, and then she left and went to another man's house. I did not see her until the next morning. To add insult to injury, today I was searching for steady music to download. I have to download music in advance because a lot of the time the connection in my study room is too slow to stream well. As I'm searching, I came across her favorites playlist. It's a reminder and a blueprint to what was going on with my wife and how she felt. Looking at the songs in the timeline, the lyrics hurt like the first liked song of the year on her favorites list was Love Bites by Def Leppard. From there, if you're looking at it from the perspective of a betrayed husband, it only gets worse. Motley Cruz Poison, and then we get to Love is in the Dark. Further up the list, we get to the song by PM Dawn, Let's Do It Again, where she's talking about her one night stand and how she wants to do it again. Then, I see just a kiss. I imagine this song was favored around the time that my wife had her first kiss with another man that wasn't me. It's painful to see, to be honest. I can look back and realize that this had progressed, and that was the moment when I should have started seeing things, but I didn't. I honestly should have seen things long before this point. From that point forward, 
My wife was no longer mine. Her thoughts, emotions, feelings were all geared toward another man. As the playlist gets to the song tomorrow by Chris Young, I don't know if that song was saved for me on her mind or with him on her mind, but the lyrics tonight I'm going to love you like there's no tomorrow lead me to believe that she was thinking about him. As the list continues, I could tell that my wife's feelings and opinion of me were changing. Initially, she was so struck with her new interest, so that's the focus of the songs. The era playlist started with lust and excitement, but as time went on, it got sadder. I could see in the music what my wife was feeling. She was hating me, thinking that I was different now. She was over me, and she was wanting things back to the way they used to be. She was done with me. The music tells the tale. The thing is, I had changed, no more so than people do in long relationships. What was changing was her view of me, and it was a warped view because of her affair. She was convincing herself that I was a horrible person, a horrible husband, that I didn't love her. This was the furthest from the truth, but it's what she needed to tell herself to be able to keep up her affair. My wife changed her hairstyle, which she had not done in over a decade. My wife began wearing makeup, which she had never done. She bought perfume. The other change, which I didn't notice, was that she began paying less attention to me. She started being angrier toward me. I was losing, and eventually lost her. She told me on the day that we got married that she would love me forever, but it wasn't true. On that day, I realized that she did not love me. I don't doubt whether she once did because I believe that she once did, but on that day, it was gone. She was daydreaming about another man, fantasizing about him, wanting to be with him when she was with me. When we were together, she wanted to talk to him. When she needed a shoulder to cry on or someone to talk to, she ran to him and not me. Should I fake it? What's love got to do with it? So last year, I was cheated on by my wife, who I had been married to for a decade. I discovered her infidelity close to a year ago. She had a month-long affair with her boss, which culminated with them sleeping together multiple times. Flash forward to today. I have a very good job that I love, but it requires that I travel extensively. Most of the time, it's just a week or two a month, however, a recent project has required that I be out of the country for a couple of months. This project is not complete, and I am a few days away from returning home. The issue is that for the first time in nearly a decade and a half that I have known my wife, I am not excited to see her. I'm actually regretting having to see her. I really don't miss her. I miss the comfort of my home, the comfort of having someone to be affectionate with, but I don't miss her. I miss our children tremendously, though. The time away from the kids we have together is agonizing. I have been playing in my head what activities I will do with them when I get home to make up for being away. So, the question is, should I fake my love for her? If I fake it, will I eventually feel it for real? Before discovering her affairs, she was my world. I viewed her as if she hung the stars, she could do no wrong. Now, I question everything she says. I get knots in my stomach when I give her compliments that are expected from a husband. Before I left for these few months, I did not feel this way. I was extremely hurt. I still am confused, sad, bewildered, lost. Even now. I just seem to be more mad than anything else, mad at her for being so selfish, mad at myself for wanting to work it out after the ultimate betrayal. How can I move forward and never be happy with her again? I desperately want to be happy. I want our marriage to work. I don't believe in divorce. When I said I do, I meant it. I want to be a good role model for my children and to show them what commitment really is. My parents married in their 20s and stayed married until the day they died. I'm also scared of the unknown, scared of losing everything that I have built over the years. I'm scared of having to restart, and then I'm pissed. I'm pissed at her for messing everything up, pissed at her for putting me in a position of having to sacrifice my moral and ethical code to be with someone, pissed at her for putting me in a position to potentially have to start over. I don't love her right now. 
Should I stay and fake it until I do? Will I ever love her again? On the flip side, the distance seems to have made her grow much fonder of me. She seems to be in a better place and seems to be genuinely in love with me again. However, when she says things like I will love you forever, it's all I can do to not remind her that she already broke that promise once. She's doing everything right, but I still want to be mad. It's been two years since my wayward spouse started her affair. In the immediate discovery of her affair, we both made all kinds of mistakes and caused each other more trauma than necessary. Recently, the last 12 months or so, she's been doing everything right. Her attitude is different. She checks in, she calls, she plans family outings and then just couples outings. She isn't angry all the time. Her approach to disagreements is to try and see my side before she reacts. If I'm being honest with myself, she is doing everything right now. Anyway, I still, however, find myself mad to the point of telling myself that I hate her throughout the day. Where I used to brag to my coworkers about how awesome my wife was, now I never mention her to anyone. And when a thought pops into my head that's positive about her throughout the day, I can't shake that voice in my head that says, I hate that person. I am worried that this self-talk is affecting our recovery, but I don't know how to silence it. When I drive past the place that she worked during the affair, her affair was with her boss, I can't help but get filled with rage. For a period, we were doing really well with our recovery, we were getting back on track, but recently, this anger is really affecting me. I'm mad with myself for begging her to stay with me after discovering her affair. I am angry that I was able to be so affected by another human. I'm angry that the one person that I trusted more than anyone else on this planet betrayed me, and I'm angry that I have lost faith in humanity as a whole. I know this is a subreddit for infidelity, but I desperately need help with this anger and with what I'm feeling. I want to be as one with my spouse again, but internally I have a ton of conflict that's keeping me from getting there. I'm almost two years post D-Day, and I can say that I have literally thought about her affair every single day since discovery. To all who are reading this, I'm at a crossroads and would greatly appreciate your advice or insights on how to navigate these turbulent emotions and the future of my marriage. If you love this story and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.